Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another news video. In this video, we're going to be doing something a bit different than usual. Instead of covering a topic per video, I'll be trying to cover several topics in this one video. So it's going to be a bit longer of a video, but I think that should be fine. So yeah, a bit out of a new format. Maybe let me know in the comments if this is more helpful. I'm not sure, I'm still playing around with this kind of style of video. So first off, we have some announcements from the WCA concerning World Championships and Continental Championships. I'll show you the image on screen for the applications and as you can see we have two applications for world championships and for continental championships we have one for each. I know that a lot of major competitions were cancelled this year because of coronavirus but especially for NA champs it's nice to see Toronto trying to host it again. I was pretty saddened to miss that competition but I'm glad to see that in two years it's going to be held there again and they're giving another shot at that so hopefully I can make that competition even though I couldn't make this year's. So the continental championships are in 2022 which is bit far off but the main concern is for the world championships which is next year so we don't really know how coronavirus would really go until then but yeah we do have the applications both in europe which is interesting i would love to visit there sometime so i think if i can make these competitions it'll be super cool but yeah it does seem like the wca is trying to reopen more comps and this is shown by planning for these major comps like world champs and continental champs Speaking of competitions coming back, we actually had our first ever competition come back since coronavirus, and that was Lonely Denmark 2020. So this competition was held in Denmark, obviously, and it lasted from July 11th to 12th. So I think Denmark has been dealing pretty well with the virus, so I think that was why they were allowed to hold the competition. They did follow the guidelines from Denmark, having a lower competitor limit, and that's just to make sure that there aren't gatherings of too many people in one place, which is definitely a good idea for this time. There were definitely some concerns about no mandatory face masks during the competition. WCA did release some safety policies that they recommended to competitions, but they really weren't enforced, I don't think. So yeah, there was some criticism with the competition not really requiring that. However, in my opinion, since the country is doing decently well in terms of cases for this virus, I think it makes sense that they might want to choose a more relaxed approach for the competition. However, I still think it is safer to adhere to the WCA guidelines. Even though they are recommended, I still think it is pretty safe to follow those. Also, at that competition, we actually had a record from Rasmus. I think he got a Pyramix single NR, which I'll link in the description if you guys want to check that out. It was also using the X-Men Bell V2 Pyramix, which is super cool. We're seeing a newly released Pyramix used in a new comp that is finally coming back. So it's great to see that things are coming a little bit back to normal. Definitely, there aren't too many comps coming out, but at least we got one right now, which is a good start. For competitions these days, we have online competition, so we can't really forget talking about keeping at home and the fact that Leo won again at keeping at home. I don't even remember how many times he has won, but it's been so many times and it's been absolutely insane how well he's been performing. Also, he's been doing super well at the Monkey League as well, and he's been doing super great off camera as well. So I think recently, he posted some YouTube UWRs for Debate 3, but those are super fast and he got some like almost sub 5 averages. So if you do want to check it out, the link will be in the description. It's crazy how during quarantine people got in so fast, like Leo and Timon. And I think after competitions start to come back more and more, Timon and Leo are the first people that are going to get the sub 6 average. I'm calling it here right now. Next off, let's talk a bit about hardware. So now we have some more information about the GAN Pyramix. Timon did an unboxing on his Twitch, and a lot of other people have been getting these Pyramix and showing videos on them. Even though I don't have this Pyramix, the coolest part I have really seen was that it has core magnets. So Cubix does have a video on this, which I'll link in the description. And in that video, he talks more about the core magnets, and I think it is a super, super cool innovation from GAN. I think it's really nice to see that GAN's trying to expand to more events, and also innovating those events as well. Also, it seems like the magnets for those Pyramixes are also adjustable, which is super cool. So as expected, this Pyramix seems to have some pretty good performance, being super smooth, and also having some great corner cutting, which is great to see. I think Timon and John Gaynor both got this Pyramix, and I think both of them are really liking them. So I think it's really exciting to see this new Pyramix come out, especially with the X-Men Bell V2 just releasing. So yeah, now I'm even more excited for this Pyramix, and I would love to get my hands on it when it comes out. Now, onto the Shang Shao clock. More and more people have been getting this clock, and it seems like this clock is a tiny bit disappointing. Yes, it probably is a bit better performing than the Lingyao, and it is definitely cheap and magnetic, which is also super great. However, it didn't really feel like the cheese square one of clock. It seems like clock hardware is still quite far from being perfect, and we have a long way to go. However, as I mentioned before, since the bar is quite low, the Shang Shao clock still is a great option, and if you don't have a clock already, this is definitely a great place to start. Also speaking about clock, the Angstrom V2 clock has been also announced. So Phil Yu, I think, was the first one that mentioned it, and I think Timon also made a video on this clock. So the Angstrom V1 clock was not really the greatest, it was super expensive, and it didn't have the greatest reception. However, we are hoping that this V2 is going to be more promising. I know Chris Ren was the one that started the V1, I think, but he has left the cubicle since then. So I'm not really sure if he's involved, probably not. But either way, I am excited for this puzzle. Now the question is, what clock is this based on? Because we know the V1 was based on a Lingao, but now 
we have the Shangshou clock as well. I think his clock is still based off the Lingao because that's what they have been working on for the longest time. However, I think if they could transition it to work with Shangshou, it would be much better. The Shangshou does have a lot of features already in it, which is super great, like the magnets, of course. And I think it's also easy to open up the clock using some screws. So if the Kubeco does use this clock, it's not necessary to really add those features to a new Lingao clock and make it more expensive. I know that magnetizing the clock and making it openable is going to be increasing the price. So if they use the Shangshou clock as the base, that would be super cool and it might lower the price from $75 to maybe something less like $50 or lower. Also, I think it's quite easy to be doubtful of this clock because the first one wasn't really too great. But I think before quarantine, I might have tried this clock. I think it was Keenan's clock, and it's super, super good. So if that clock is the V2, I think it definitely is the greatest clock on the market. But obviously, quality control is quite difficult with clocks. But we'll see if the Kibiko can still pull off a nice clock. I know that Chris Tran is not there, so things might be changing. But I think they are still planning on releasing this clock, which is super exciting. Lastly, for hardware, there is something new coming out maybe for Moyu. So we already know the Meilong M and then the Artist 3 2020. Those were huge successes, I think, by Moyu. But it seems like they're not done yet. This year, I think they're trying to release the Tibet 3 WRM 2020, which is super exciting. I don't think there's too many images online, and I'm not sure exactly which one is real. So I'll put some images on screen. But this, I think, confirmed that this puzzle is coming out. So Moyu has been on a roll for Tibet 3 cubes. But now with this cube, I think it's even more exciting. We'll get another option by Moyu for Tibet 3. So yeah, I definitely have high hopes for this puzzle. Let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to this puzzle as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you do enjoy this format, please let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.